Muchas gracias, Roberto. Yo creo que eso es un desarrollo muy, muy interesante y me alegro mucho ver que RN está encima de todos los otros modelos que existen en este momento. Lamentablemente la noticia es la misma, todavía vamos con un retraso, así que preguntas en el radio, por favor. Y ahora, pues, como ya Mario introdujo a Paolo, eh, bueno, no hay nada más que añadir, únicamente que lo va a saltar en italiano. La presentación, ¿va a ser italiano o alemán? Sorry about that, I cannot... Uh put you through butchering your beautiful tongue, so uh, I, will, uh, I will speak in English for the next uh, 10 minutes or so. I think you have heard uh, the only crucial piece of information regarding uh, this model you have already heard from Mario and Benjamin. Uh, Red and, and the Yaren have uh, collaborated in the last uh, year and a half, two years, to put, to put together this complex <coughs> and, and perfect model for 44 countries <laughs> in Europe. And uh, this model, if everything goes right, and will be released at the end of July. So this is these are the crucial pieces of information that that I hope you retain. So in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to say a few words on other things which uh, are related to the model, that are really not uh, not crucial. Um, I will briefly talk about uh, uh, the different steps that we went through to um, to assemble the model. So from, uh, from the coverage to the hazard, uh, the exposure, vulnerability, and, and all the pieces that, uh, that you are familiar with. I will spend maybe a couple of minutes on, on validation, which is a very important step of any model development. And uh, for validation, I mean uh, uh, comparing uh, model losses versus uh, losses of historical events. And, uh, and, and then we'll, we'll say a few words about the financial module. You already have seen the coverage, so everything is here in this map. We have 44 countries, from very small to very large, uh, from Iceland to Turkey. Anything essentially east of the former, uh, west of the former Soviet Union is included. Um, from the other side, <laughs> we uh, have used essentially the, the results of the most comprehensive study on hazard ever made in Europe, which lasted for a few years and was funded by the European community, essentially homogenized the different hazard models of all the countries in Europe, and uh, it included most of the most advanced techniques in, in, in hazard modeling, including uh, a treatment of uncertainty of different alternative models that we have included. This, this project is called SHARE, and the results were just released at the end of 2014. And because some of us uh, um, collaborated with this project, we were able to implement what was developed there in, in our model very quickly. Um, as I just mentioned, this project included multiple views of uh, the asset, which uh, clearly is, is true in every part of the world. Uh, we really don't know with absolute certainty where the next event will occur and how big they will be and how, what is the geometry of the faults and things like this. So this is included in the model, three alternative models of seismicity, which lead to a very, very large stochastic catalog of future events, much larger than most models in the world that I know of. There are about four million events that cover uh, the entire Europe. Um, I will not go through the details, but there has been a lot of work going on in, in uh, differentiating the seismicity across Europe. Uh, about 400 distinct seismic sources were, were included. And uh, the, for the first time, the catalog was also of, of, of historical events was processed in an homogenized fashion. Um, regarding the evaluation of the shaking, once that we have produced a simulated earthquake. Here again, we have included multiple ground motion prediction equations, not just uh, uh, one. And also, we have differentiated the ground motion prediction equation for different events occurring in different tectonic regimes. Uh, those in the stable continental region, those in the crustal uh, active uh, regions have different attenuation, and this is included in the model. Uh, regarding soil effects, local effects, uh, we have uh, 
used a methodology that was pioneered by USGS, which is based on, on topography. There is a, a, a high correlation between uh, the slope of, uh, of the terrain and the, and the stiffness of the soil, which we have used to estimate the, the, the shear wave velocity, so the stiffness of the soil across Europe. Here you have a map, and here it's, it's built into the model. Regarding uh, the industry exposure database, we have, that's where most of our, the time of, of the team went. So we developed a very, very detailed industry exposure database of commercial, residential, industrial, and public buildings. We have used data that was uh, um, put together by different uh, projects that, that, uh, were, were, uh, that we collaborated in, at least some of us. In the, they were actually funded by European uh, community, at least some of them. And we supplemented that with uh, additional uh, statistical analysis and also extraction from uh, uh, satellite images, as I, I will show you in, in a second. Um, for most of the countries in, in Europe, we were able to put together a very detailed database of up to 30 arc seconds, which is means that our lower latitude about one kilometer, one kilometer grid, and a higher latitude even, even finer. So for Italy we have here you see the full level of, of granularities of the industry exposure database. For uh, what concerns the industrial, um, industrial assets, we did we went one step through. We actually use an automatic uh, um, procedure to extract the footprint of all the buildings in industrial areas in Europe. There are databases that tell us where the industrial areas are. So we put together an automatic uh, procedure which uses open street maps and it goes inside and extracts the footprints of the buildings. And so we use this very detailed uh, representation in our, in our model. And we also checked the consistency of this technique with uh, um, uh, results uh, that were published for, for different countries. For example, in Denmark, we knew how many, uh, what was the total square footage of buildings, or industrial buildings in Denmark, but we didn't know where they were. With our techniques, technique, we extracted from the bottom up, and then we checked that what we extracted was actually in sync with what published by the, by the Danish government. And you see the, the um, they, uh, they match uh, very, very well. So, um, regarding vulnerability, we again homogenized a lot of studies that were done in Europe for different kinds of buildings, and also uh, we developed ourselves in damage functions based on the damage and the loss data that we had access to, for example, from the Department of Civil Protection. And you see uh, there are different uh, uh, colors in the map that tell you the availability of data from uh, places where real data, real damage and losses are available to data to places where uh, only data in terms of micro seismic intensity is available to data where only we had to supplement that with uh, uh, engineering analysis on, on computer models of buildings. Uh, we did similar things for contents, so again, the model does the things that you expect it to, so it computes uh, losses to the structure, the structural elements, to contents, and business interruptions, and things like that. Once we went through this very massive uh, work, we also uh, wanted to see how we were doing in terms of being able to uh, replicate uh, uh, losses to, to past events. Here you see a few of the footprints of past events that we consider, and also a zoom in the, in the lower part of the map, so closer to the Mediterranean region. <laughs> Some of these events are very uh, common to everybody. And we computed the losses of the our model predicts to residential, commercial, industrial, and public buildings as if they were repeated today. So we trended the losses that were observed that we were able to extract from, uh, from uh, public sources, and then we compare them with the, the model losses. And this, you see here, the comparison for a few of those events. So the comparison is, is, is pretty, pretty good. Uh, again, at the end, 
This model is able to uh, do analysis on single portfolios of single assets of buildings, like those of primary insurance companies, but also can, that can do uh, insurance uh, treaties and everything you expect. So again, this is uh, now available, at least in a month or so, and uh, it will cover 44 countries. And the strengths of this model are that we were able to implement essentially the, the, the state of the art of the hazard and the exposure techniques for, for, for putting together in, in this exposure database, and also put together all the know-how and the vulnerability of historical and non-historical buildings in Europe. Hopefully, you or your colleagues in the world will use this model soon. Thank you very much.